Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This report is, <clears throat> excuse me, for trading on October the 4th, 2016, and that would be Tuesday. You're looking at uh, gold. We're going to look at ticker symbol GLD first. For the past several weeks, as you can see, the market's just been dancing around the trend line support which is this purple uh, line right here and for the most part it's really not going anywhere it's looking like it wants to be weak and correct further down perhaps even to the 120.30 uh, level but it's difficult to say that because we don't have any momentum the market's just kind of flopping around uh, top side resistance right now is at 131.15 and like I said the market's just absolutely flat with not a whole lot uh, to go on so let's take a look and see if we can gauge a little bit what's going on in the futures all right here looking at the futures it's a little bit different picture we don't quite see that uh, that test of support like we did in the cash but we do see um, momentum like I said it's not really accelerating it's just kind of waffling around there currently at uh, 13 1250 is the level right now on the gold but just just a, not a whole lot going on it's still in a positive pulse wave position still just flirting with that trend line but just not not there's there's really no devastation there and we're still in a bullish position still in a bullish stance but technically speaking it's not even really in a correction all it's doing is pulling back to the trend line that's it it's not really in any powerful you know correction phase a correction has really never happened <clears throat> all we're doing is moving sideways trading within a range and we've been doing this now for the past few months so this is very interesting on you know how this is transpiring I still see a breakout to the upside coming I think the longer we extend the more powerful this breakout to the upside is going to be all right, switching to the mining shares, looking at GDX. GDX is positionally similar, but technically it's different. So positionally, like I said, same, technically slightly different because it's in a negative pulse wave. It's now trading below that trend line support, but it's really not accelerating. It's really trying to find a support for a bounce trend line here the next uh, support is at 2347 so GDX is looking uh, weaker overall than the uh, than the gold chart but it's nothing that's accelerating it's nothing that's critical it's uh, it's in a corrective bull phase it's still in a bull phase it's just in a corrective phase and we still have support at 2347 so even if that didn't hold, we still have some next support is the top of the Kumo cloud. And it's a thin cloud. So, again, I don't see a correction, a full correction developing that, that will be long lasting. I just see um, a pullback here that's going to find support somewhere around this trend line. And then we're going to be off to the races again upside resistance is at thirty dollars and thirty five cents right now <coughs> excuse me so you have to take that into consideration all right now looking at uh, silver same situation as the gold dancing around the trend line this one though is a little bit more down weak downward pronounced as it's trading near the lows uh, so far so upside resistance is at $21.18 but again 
all you're doing is trading within this range it's been range bound for months and nothing really new has happened all you're doing is taking forever to correct from the initial move from this bar here from June 27th that's all you're doing so to say oh silver's crashing silver's not crashing silver's in a in a bull phase and it's really technically not really in a corrective phase because you blasted off on June 27th and never pulled back never corrected until now this was your correction here and now we're up here this is higher than this nothing to be afraid of at this point so true true support would be not only this trend line of 1750 but also over here which you have supported 1802 so 1802 is, would serve to be a strong support and then your next support is at 1750 on the silver side with up, up uh, overhead resistance at 2118 so that's where we are right now on the silver futures alright looking at the cash market looking at SLV price a little bit better you can see the picture here it's just really just hugging the trend line alright overhead resistance at 1971 um, you've heard me say before I like the cash side of things because it's priced better overall and you can see you know the futures are usually uh, more overdone it's always overdone to the top and overdone to the bottom so the cash is, is more reasonable and sensible than uh, than the, the futures so that's why I like to look at that but anyway this is where we are right now uh, on the silver alright now you know your 3x ETFs are a little bit different uh, they move three times as the underlining. So looking at JNUG, you can see the JNUG here is in a negative pulse wave. It already broke the first and second supports of the trend line, and it's trying to make its way back up here. But uh, the lower the GDX goes, then the lower the JNUG is going to go. I'm sorry, GDXJ. The, lo the, the lower the GDXJ goes, the lower the JNUG will go. But like I showed you in the previous chart, the GDXJ looks better um, than the GDX. So this could be a short-lived uh, correction. Overhead resistance at 29.36. And we still got the air pocket between the trend line support and the top of the Kumo cloud. So this one is an interesting one to watch and I would be uh, on guard for a powerful reversal to the upside that could come into being as we are also oversold now looking at your JDST you can see it's ca it's catching a bid from that so it's trying to break out and top side resistance is at thirty three dollars and twenty three cents on the JDST but it's overbought now so this one right here you would need to be mindful of and watch closely in other words if the 2368 is taken out then this move is over alright that's the first sign that this upward move is over alright so if stops that are placed at 2368 are taken out then this upward move is over then did it close at 2528 um, this is one to watch very closely um, let's take a look here alright for those that may have gone long on the JDST alright right now you have a hard support uh, intraday at twenty two dollars and seventeen cents um, so at worst case scenario if twenty two seventeen is taken out then the move is over completely 
Now that $23 uh, quote I gave you just a moment ago, all right, that's on the daily chart. Okay, so that's your first level of support. The 2217 would be the second level of support. So I would I would watch those two price levels extremely closely. All right, looking at Nugget, you can see Nugget on the intraday chart is oversold. All right, so it's trying to find support to get up to a bounce on the intraday chart. We're looking at seventeen dollars and eighty-two cents. Once taken out, the next up upward target is eighteen sixty-five, and then nineteen forty, and then twenty dollars and ten cents. So those are your upward resistance levels that this market will try to get back up to. We'll see what it does from here, but it looks like the downside is limited at this point because it is oversold. And we're not hitting new lows. We're bouncing off the support. We're building a support base. Looking at the U.S. dollar, as you can see, this market's getting overbought. It's still in a negative pulse wave. It's been in a negative pulse wave for going on two months now. And no downside momentum. Just elongated, stretched out trading range. Just going up and down, testing the support and resistance levels. Overhead resistance now is at 97.14. I will make it 97.15. And it's... Just, there's nothing happening there. Just divine intervention from the FOMC. That's it. The Fed is just keeping the dollar alive. That's 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 all we can say about this chart. All right. So as you can see here, crude has finally broken out and is coming back up, gunning for that fifty-dollar handle. I do believe in the last video I did mention to you that uh, $50 was the upside target for the crude oil. We'll see how close it can get there. The powers that be that control and manipulate this market would like to see 60 so I think we might see 60 by, by year end because that's where they want it to go. And that's where the trajectory that it's on is headed. It's overbought, but I would not be surprised to see this market lock in. We close up for the week, then that sets the stage for next week. And if it closes up again next week, then we are now officially locked in to the new bull trend, and this market will take off like a. Yeah, so uh, the, we have support now at $40.58, and it's outside the Kumo cloud, so the bulls are in control of this market. Let's see what this translates to on the cash side. All right, well, looking at the UWTI, as you can see, this is looking rather nice. It's now in the Kumo cloud of death, unfortunately, and it's overbought, but it's locking in a bull trend within the Kumo cloud of death. Uh, let's just remove the Kumo cloud of death for a moment. Just let's look at the price action. It broke above the two trend lines, all right. But and we have momentum crossing, all right. Momentum's crossing, and to the upside and building supports way down at 1884. And there's one thing to make a note of here. Because you're in a Kumo cloud of death, funny, dangerous things can happen. This can easily break out of the Kumo cloud, only to break back down and then break back out again, or break down first and then break back out. All types of things can happen when you're in the Kumo cloud. But overall, this is a good place to be for the UWTI. And upside target, I would say the first target is $28 and then $30 a share once the futures really get on and popping and can get up beyond $50 a share. So that's where we are right now. All right, looking at your NASDAQ, uh, TQQQ, you can see right now it's gunning for the $130.56 uh, resistance high, and it looks like it's on track to do that. 
I would view any pullbacks in the stock market as opportunities to get long right now. There's just no way they're going to let these markets go down before the election, and that's just the way it is. You're locked in on so many levels. You're just hitting new highs here. This is just this is just here waiting, sitting for the for the for the pickings on this one. I'm, it's just how it is. And for those with smaller pockets, you may want to look at the QLD. Uh, that's an $86 stock now. It, it's gunning for the 87.39 resistance high. Supports at 81.80, and same story as the TQQQ, just a little bit cheaper. And last but not least, let's just deal with the elephant in the room. There's been a lot of talk and chatter about Deutsche Bank and the financial sector and banking in general. Well, here is ticker symbol FAS. We're looking at the financial section. This is the three times ETF. And what is it doing? It is in a bullish position. It's above the Kumo cloud. Trend lines are bullish and it's flirting with support almost kind of looking like the silver chart if anything comes of this which I doubt I think it's just more fear porn for the public so they can pass laws and legislations and approve bailouts at your uh, prodding and here it is so will it break down will it break out I don't know momentum's flat it's not telling you anything only thing you can do is watch the price action on this thing and see what happens. If the support breaks down, uh, if we break below 27.93, uh, then you might get your answer. But even if it does that, you still got support right here at the orange trend line, which is at 27.39. And then if that fails, you still got the top of the, of the Kumo cloud around $26 a share. And then it can even drop into it, and you could fall all the way back down to here. And then come out of the stick out of the cloud a little bit around the the twenty two twenty three dollars share level only bounce back up through the cloud again. They, I just don't see them letting anything happen to the financial market. So, because as goes the financial sector, goes the rest of the market. I don't see it happening. Uh, I will watch for upside reversals on this one on a surprise um, of the move in the market. That's all I gotta say. So, be careful on this one. Uh, if you want to find and look for other clues, look look at the FAS. Let me show you that. All right. FAS is in the downward trend, obviously, because the uh, the bull the bullish shares are running. All right. Here you are in your negative post wave. Upside resistance right now is at $34.13. Obviously, if $34.13 gets taken out, then it's going to run and forty dollars and thirty six cents is the upside target that becomes in play so you know, that's your clue right there if the forty dollars and thirty six cents is taken out then it gives us the air pocket between the trend line resistance and the top of the kumo cloud which is up here at fifty two dollars and sixty cents we break above the fifty dollars and sixty cents and get up to about fifty five dollars getting up to sixty now you're bullish and the trend has changed that's a lot of work from down here to up here. So if you're not sure and unclear what's happening, your first sign that something may be going down is if it gets above this $40.36. If price action gets above that and this uh, purple trend line crosses above that, yeah, you, you you may say something's in, in play there, but if we get up here, the trend has changed, and now you seriously need to start looking at uh, what's going on with the rest of the market and the financial sector. Even if it gets up in here and the trend changes and FAS becomes bullish and the stock market's still running high, still, you would have to watch this because this is telling you that the rest of the market's coming down. All right? And let me show you its cousin, and then we'll be done with the video. Here's your UVXY. It would take something apocalyptic to move this thing. This thing barely even moved during the Brexit. But here we are. Nonetheless, we got to talk about it. All right. If this thing gets above $22.35, that's your first alert, your first alarm that the trend in the stock market is over. 
and it's ready to correct and come down all right for whatever reason that's your first sign right there your next sign is if we get above the trend line here now we're not going to use the 28876 because these things have been repriced and priced and priced so whatever this it just takes it takes forever for these things to get repriced but and for the charts to play themselves out but suffice it to say you get above the long-term trend line resistance and outside of the Kumo cloud and there you there you have it on the daily chart it looks a little bit easier to look at this makes more sense okay, here you go so on the daily chart your first alert would be the 2132 2539 resistance then you're in the Kuma cloud of death which is a wide cloud the range is down here from the $20 handle all the way up to the the $53 handle alright that's a wide cloud where anything can happen all types of foolishness but if you get outside this cloud you see UVXY trading above 50 yeah there's a problem there's a major problem in the works that means the the bull market and the stocks are dead financial sector is coming down and yeah you can say Armageddon or whatever you want to call it um, it's talking purely from a trading standpoint price action not market quote unquote into the world collapses and all that stuff you already know about my playlist that uh, there is no collapse but you know what I'm talking about from a trading perspective alright so that's it so remember bulls make money bears make money and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back.